Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to All Beer Inside, Back to the Brewery, socially distanced episodes at this time. Uh, today we are in the Rockland area? Rockland Hammond. Rockland Hammond area uh, at Broken Stick Brewery with Stefan. Welcome. Thank you for hosting us today. I appreciate it. Uh, so, uh, you brought us out some delicious beers to try. What's the first one we're going to try? So it's our Mully's Red. So it's an Irish Red, 4.8%. Uh, probably our best seller since we're at a golf course. Um, a lot of <laughs> golfers don't like to drink super heavy beers. Uh, it's a little malty. Um, but yeah, like I said, awesome. the uh, so most popular one. We do a long distance toast. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, that smells like a beautiful red. Mmm. Oh, it's a perfect like setting beer too because you know we're right around St. Patrick's Day while we're filming this. So oh yeah, that's that's on that right level of uh, St. Patrick's beer. Perfect, awesome. Uh, so what's the Broken Stick Brewery story? So yeah, we started in 2014 um, in Ottawa actually. So um, one of our former partners decided to buy some equipment and uh, was looking for partners. And I loved beer, <laughs> uh, and I said, why not? a lot more work than I actually thought. So we're on uh, Canatech, if you guys know Dominion City in Ottawa, uh, very close. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we went uh, two separate ways. We, we closed in 2017 on Canatech Road, and then we're looking for a, a, um, a cool place to open. Uh, we knew the owner of the golf course here, and we brought it forward uh, to him and he thought it was an awesome idea. Uh, it's never been done in Canada, so we're the first uh, crap brewery in, in Canada to open on a golf course. That's awesome. And um, yeah, we, we opened 2019 here, and then uh, the pandemic hits, which uh, kind of made things a little different, but uh, we're adapting and then we're surviving and, and still making great beers. Yeah. Plus, the good thing about a golf course is it is a socially distant sport when you think about it, so. Absolutely. You're, you're probably not getting like the two, three hundred people you're hoping for on a weekly, like on a weekend basis, but you're still getting. Oh, it, it was crazy people. last summer. Yeah. Like last summer was just insane. And we were lucky for that because a lot of, of breweries couldn't have people here. I yeah. mean, our patio, we have the biggest patio in the region. Um, so it was it was packed pretty much that's, every day. So that's awesome here. And you guys are striving and surviving. That's that's the most important part is, uh, I mean, from what I've seen in Ontario, only two have, two or three have shut down during COVID. So I'm not even sure who that's, it is. Uh, I know Abe and Herb. Um, I heard about them, and I can't remember the other one, but there hasn't been many. There's, there's been more openings than closings yeah. in the province of Ontario. Surprisingly, which, yeah. Which is awesome. I, lo I love hearing that, is that this industry, you know, people want better things. So people want beer with more taste or even vineyards, like local vineyards. I'm sure there's a bunch that have opened. Um, I'm starting to see like hard or distilleries starting to open too. So people are willing to spend more for better quality. For sure. Yeah. Just Support spend. local is, is big right now. Mm -hmm. um, the community has been huge. So we uh, were the first one in Rockland. We're, we're technically in Hammond, uh, which is a community about five minutes outside of Rockland. Uh, there's a new one that hope, uh, it opened during the summer, I believe, a another one in Rockland. So now there's two um, in the past two years. So that's that's great for the community. Yeah. Uh, we haven't had a chance to go just yet because of COVID, um, obviously, uh, but we plan on, on going to see them uh, very soon too. Are you guys uh, also delivering right now? Uh, like Yeah, so we have to change our uh, our plan. So basically our goal was to have people here originally because, well, craft breweries enjoy when, when there's people around and, and, and you can chat about beer. <laughs> with people um but when it uh, it hit and they're like oh the restaurant can't be open anymore so we're like uh what do we do we weren't even selling online back then so uh we put everything in cans <laughs> and uh we we now do delivery we ship across ontario so that's something else that's that's new uh, unfortunately we can't do quebec because i know you guys are from from quebec yeah um yeah. the government of canada is, is still a little picky about uh doing cross-border uh, yep. deliveries with uh with beers but um yeah. Maybe one day, maybe <laughs> yeah. one day. Uh, so, I mean, outside of obviously COVID, uh, COVID was quick, quick kick in the butt for everybody, all businesses across, small businesses, big businesses, everybody took a whooping except Amazon and Walmart. Um, <laughs> what were some of their kind of roadblocks difficulties starting originally the one in Ottawa and then just from there to here outside the partner separation? What were some, some other difficulties you guys ran into? So in Ottawa, I think it, it took more money than we originally planned, which is what I originally read about it too, is like, oh, whatever you plan on spending, then double it. Uh, which 
uh, we went on a budget in Ottawa. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it was interesting. So we had more struggles. So I don't recommend anybody to start with a very low budget. If you're going to start a craft brewery, uh, put a bit more money into it. <laughs> um, and then, uh, yeah, when we opened up here, so this was new. So nobody had ever done it before. So basically, um, um, golf courses have their own license for, um, to, for serving alcohol. So we're basically mixing three different licenses. Okay. So Interesting. Uh, we had one to serve the beer here, one on the golf course, and we had one because of the brewery. So we had to check with the AGCO, so the Alcohol and Gaming Commission of Ontario, uh, just to make sure it was okay. They checked with their lawyers. They're like, yo, there, there's nothing wrong with that. So um, that was an interesting part. And then just waiting on the equipment. Uh, that's that's the, uh, the long part. Um, like every brewery out there, you got to wait uh, a while before you get your equipment. <laughs> So that was the biggest struggle. Everything else was, uh, the city was happy to have a brewery. I think uh, if, you, if small towns don't have one, they're, they're <laughs> yeah. waiting for one right now, right? So um, yeah, and it, it was actually not that bad. And we, uh, we built the brewery in about four months, which is unheard of. Wow. Um, one of my other partners, he works in construction. He's the one who actually built the brewery. And people are impressed at how fast it got built because we, we wanted to reopen yeah. uh, in time for, uh, for summer, um, yeah. but it was a bit too late. We opened it in September, so we were still, uh, still had the golf route a little bit. Yeah, I mean, you know, we are in, in, obviously we're not northern Canada, we're more southern Canada, so snow only really starts October-ish. So, and we and had a really also, good year that yeah, year too. Yeah. It, was, it was late, late winter. So uh, yeah, we took full advantage. For yeah, sure. I know uh, there's a golf course in Quebec that as soon as there's green back on the ground, they open to the public. Oh, that's, so that's our goal here it's, too. <laughs> it's, it's fantastic here. And yeah. I like that where, you know, especially, uh, I mean, I hate to say it, but Doug Ford stepped up and he's like, look, I need you guys to survive. We make, we obviously make money off you guys. So we need you guys around. For to, sure. To yeah. Out. That's uh, so. one of the things Dougie <laughs> was, uh, was good for the buck of beer. I'm not sure if anybody can actually, uh, pull that one off. It might not be great beer. Yeah. Um, we, we tried it. We're like, it's beer. It's, <laughs> it's pretty much, there's, yeah. there's no BSing it. it it's beer. It, it tasted like your classic BMC style, you know, ale. There's nothing special. Yeah, there's nothing I think to, you get a chance to try it. To write home about it is just, you know what, uh, as, as the group, as we get together as a group of friends, let's, let's try the buck of beer, see what Why it's not? like. And then it's like, oh, I got four left over. Hey, Dad, here's a four pack. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, all you guys and, and the delivery, I, I love that concept. I know Ontario's allowed. I believe BC's allowed. Alberta's starting to step up. Unfortunately, in Quebec, it's not really an option right now. There is an eatery with a brewery that's allowed because of whatever license they have. But uh, we're hoping, like we're hoping and praying that Quebec steps up and, and lets this happen. And as you said before, we want beer across Canada. So well, I think it's one of the pros yeah. in this COVID pandemic is that the liquor laws are changing a little bit because mm -hmm. they want to support these, these local breweries and wineries and, yeah. and whatnot, right? So they need to survive. And this is actually going to be a pro in the long run mm -hmm. for, for everybody in this. So that's one of the, the positives too. Yeah, I mean, just reading the Canadian beer awards this year, it's like, oh, Alberta, 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 BC. I'm like, why? Can't, why? Why can't I get those beers? So, <laughs> uh, and I know, like in Ontario, uh, not Ontario, in America, you know, you go to Vermont, you get beer from California. It's just, it's not fair. So, no. that's, that's that's my goals of going to California. Yeah. Uh, so, Broken Stick Brewery, where did that name come from? So yeah, it was uh, two of the previous owners. Um, they were, uh, one was a hockey dad. The other one wanted to be a hockey dad, didn't have any kids uh, just yet. Um, I tried to become a hockey dad uh, with my daughter, but she, uh, she did not want to play hockey. So, um, but it stuck. It's a, it's a great name, especially yeah. where we're at right now with the, uh, with the golf course. So um, you don't need to play golf to come here and enjoy beer. That, that's one of the, the good things. Mm -hmm. um, but you do what we want to push is, is outdoor activities. Um, in the winter, we have um, trails. Uh, so you can actually go snowshoeing on the golf course in the winter. Um, and in the summer, you can play, uh, you can play golf. So, awesome. Yeah. Uh, a small suggestion. I, I suggest Frisbee golf. I know that's starting to become popular too. Yeah, so I watched that on YouTube actually. Maybe, that's pretty uh, cool. maybe just an added thing. I mean, you have a giant lot across from you that you guys can always, I don't know if it's private property or whatever, but just. I think the farmer might course. not be that happy, never but <laughs> we can try. We but can yeah, try. that's, I mean, that's one of your things. So you're obviously next to farmland. Do you get a lot of farmers coming in for the spent grain and things like that? Or? Uh, so we give our spent grain to one of our uh, friend farmers because, um, 
or farmer friend, should mm -hmm. I say. Yeah. Um, he's got a few cows and we're only seven barrels, so we don't produce that much beer. Um, so it goes by, it goes pretty fast. He's also an engineer and he actually helps us with the brewery. So it's, it's a win-win for us. Awesome. Uh, we give him grain, he helps us out. Cool. Uh, so what's beer number two we're going to be trying? So it's the Smoketoberfest. So it's a smoked uh, lager, so a rock beer. Um, our brewer's a big fan of lagers and of traditional beers. So I'm a fan of, of the big IPAs and the big, uh, the big stouts, but he's, uh, he's more of a, a mellow guy. So this one was brewed for Oktoberfest ah. and it's smoky, so it can age pretty well. So it's, uh, if you like smoked bacon, yeah, you it's, will. It smells fantastic. Mm, that's not, that's that right level of smoke. I like. It's not like overly smoky. It's uh, yeah. You you might not want to have uh, two or three in a row. Yeah. But it's a good beer to. Uh, it's interesting. I I, uh, I I was wondering when when he came out with that one. I'm like, oh, how's that gonna taste? And I'm like, if you like smoked ham, you're gonna love yeah. this beer. Um, I don't know if it's the right description for it, but no, uh, it's, it makes it's, sense. It's that smokiness. It's not like the overly powering smoked bacon that because we've. I've had some excessively smoky beers. I think Church Key makes, it's called Holy Smoke. And it's yes, just, I've tried that one. That's I'd... like, boom, smoke. But it's a fantastic beer. It's like, I'm drinking a campfire. Yeah. You know, uh, this is not the campfire level, but this is this is solid. Like, this is very smooth for, for a Rauch, I find. 6% so. too, so you can't wow. really taste the 6%. No, this is a solid beer. <clears throat> it's fantastic. Awesome. Uh, so some of the names and labels, uh, obviously we have your mentioned your brewer pre-show? So yeah, so there's a story behind this. Is, okay. um, so my buddy designed the website and he was looking for stock photos. So he found this on the web and <laughs> he used it on the website. And we're like, oh, it looks good. And then uh, I had a big beard at the, at the point and, uh, <laughs> and they're like, oh, it's Steph. No, it's not me. So it was, it was just there on the website. So we decided to put it on the wall. Um, and then we started looking for brewers and uh, Dave is, uh, is a great brewer. He, uh, he's got this, uh, this big beard, um, and we're like, uh, Dave, we didn't hire you for your for your brewing prowess. We we uh, we hired you because you actually looked like the guy on our wall. So that's a joke that's happening right now. People think it, it's actually Dave. So um, so Dave is with us today, even though he's uh, at the cottage. So uh, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, and, and obviously, like you said, you had to switch all of a sudden to a canning, uh, which we're I'm assuming everything was just in house before, more or less. Growlers as well. No, we uh, we used to do growlers at the other spot, okay. and growlers suck. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you got to clean them and they come back and they're, they're full of you, God knows what. Um, yeah, unless you're, you're dealing with a craft guy, you know, people put cigarette butts and all that stuff. Oh, we found money in it. Uh, <laughs> dead, ma dead mice, uh, all kinds of crazy stuff. Is Bob um, and Doug McKenzie? Like? <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Um, but no, our goal when we reopened here, we actually bought our own canning system. Mm -hmm. uh, they're expensive. Ours is pretty small, so it's only two cans at a time. Okay. But we do our own canning. So we, we're basically 50-50 canning and, and kegging before the pandemic. And then uh, April last year, we just started canning everything. Now we're back to a bit more on tap, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting times right now because you don't know where we're going. Uh, is it going to be red zone? Is yeah, it going to be yeah. yellow zone? So it's, it's yeah, special. Well, that's why we contacted you is you are in a lesser zone than, than the rest of us right now. And uh, we are trying to contact places that are obviously COVID safe, uh, like yourself from what I've seen on live, you know, numbers are very low here. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, <clears throat> we're keeping safe and we want the people we talk to, to stay safe, to make us, to make you guys feel like we're not, you know, just, oh yeah, I might have COVID cough, cough, cough. like, no. <laughs> yeah, no, we wouldn't have done this interview if yeah, we didn't exactly. think that it was so going to be a safe one. Right? We, uh, and that's, that's what it is right now. And. You know, uh, beer is science to me. I'm pro-science, so as soon as I get to step up for that needle in the arm, I'm going to, personally. Absolutely. But, um, Absolutely. You know, my 75-year-old father just got his this week, so it's just it's wow. continuing, and, and I'm looking forward to hopefully September, October. Maybe summer can push itself, and we can all I get hope back so, a, man. I, I can't wait to see patio people here. And yeah. get back in terrasse and just start drinking and hanging out again. So oh, as yeah. the CDC already said, if everybody in your group is vaccinated, Go hang out. So really, I didn't hear yeah. that, but uh, that's yeah. great news. Yeah, oh, so. wow, it's awesome beer. Uh, now it looks like you kept your kept your labels nice and simple on your beers. What made you decide to stay that and not go over the top with like crazy designs and, and things like that? Uh, we have some crazier designs. Uh, right now, we're a bit all over the map with our labels. They may change at some point. So it's my girlfriend's a graphic designer. She's the one who actually does the labels, and our brewer as well is is very creative. So he likes to have his input on on the labels. Um, we have our 
Hazer Beam, which has a, a robot <laughs> shooting <laughs> lasers from his eyes. So we do have some crazy stuff. Like right now, we don't have much in stock, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's why you're seeing more of the uh, laid back kind of okay. logos. That, yeah, because I'm only going with what I visually saw yep. up front. I, I didn't, unfortunately, have a chance to research the website. So, but. And, and one of them is, is actually a, uh, a beer we just brewed. It just came out this week. It's called uh, uh, Little Ray's Gator Ale. Okay. Um, so every can, uh, a buck from every can sold goes to um, their nonprofit organization. That's awesome. Uh, because they're struggling right now. Yes. So we thought we could uh, help them out. They're a little zoo that's, uh, or sorry, they're sh more of a shelter. So mm -hmm. they rescue animals and then they keep them here because they can't release them back. So yeah. they, they have a, uh, a three-legged alligator. <laughs> it's actually on the cover of, of our can. Um, so it's uh, Lady Chomps a lot. Um, <laughs> so she made the made our can. So it's a little a little fun uh, or a little more interesting. And it's a New England style IPA. So it's uh, it's selling really well. It came out yesterday, two days ago, okay, and it's cool. it's been very very popular. Yeah. So I I absolutely love the concept of of you know it sounds bad like it sounds weird but charity beers. Uh, like you know the black is beautiful the all together beers that came out to yep. support uh, restaurant workers and stuff i i love when breweries step up and do that kind of stuff it's, yeah we can help i mean we we were lucky enough to survive this or most of us yes survive this pandemic so if we can give to somebody else and, and try to help out as much as we can we will yeah. um we had a nice meeting with these people and, and they're like we've they've you know spent some of their money to try to save their their business mm -hmm. i mean they've, they've been doing this for a long time and we're like hey you know what let's help you guys out yeah yeah, that's uh, like, you know, craft beer is, is the community. And so you're trying to support the community that yes. you're in or or anything. It's, you know, if, if you have more than that community that you want to support as such, like all together, you know, restaurants are dying, unfortunately, because of COVID. Let's try and support the, the people who don't own the restaurant, but the people who work for these people who were the first ones to no longer have a job. Exactly. So, yeah. And uh, the, the concept is uh, I love it. Uh, I personally, if I were to ever start a brewery, day one, I would have a charity beer. Yep. Even, even if I had no name, I would day one have a charity beer because <laughs> there's so many things that I I'd love to support. Um, just my family background, that's that's the type of people we are is we give what we can, but we're also realistic where like we can't obviously give everything. No, that's so, that's true. Yeah, it's all about balance, yeah. but if you can help, I mean, do it. Yeah. That's, that's what we feel. No, I love to hear that. Awesome. The names of the beers, where do those kind of come up from? So uh, Dave is not only a great brewer, he's also the uh, the king of puns. <laughs> so uh, this, some of these names are just like crazy. Like he, he speaks beer puns every day. Like he lives, breathes, sleeps <laughs> beer. Um, so so we love Dave. And uh, he comes up with these names. And then we, uh, we basically have a brainstorm and say, hey, OK, it's a great name. Or uh, say, oh, OK, maybe not for this beer. Uh, but yeah, so. Uh, our lagers are, are very plain and simple. So we have a Hellas, it's called Hellas. We have a Pilsner, it's called Pilsner. But uh, <laughs> all the other stuff is, uh, like the next beer we're gonna try is, is actually uh, called uh, Desert Storm instead of Desert Storm. Yeah. So we went and played a, a little pun on it. Awesome. Um, so it's a uh, Desert Stout, 8%. Um, and it's uh, probably one of our most popular beers. Well, let's give it a try. Cool. Awesome. Cheers. Toast. Oh yeah. So is it, it's more dessert than pastry, or it's kind of... Sorry, no, it's yeah. a pastry stout. Yep. Because we had some wild pastry stouts coming oh, out Oh, I bet, yeah. It's, oh, oh, it's popular. Chocolate. Mmm. That is a fantastic beer. Wow. See, that's my type of beer. Like, that's, so, that's a nice chill-out, like, after-supper relaxing beer. Yeah, you might not want to have like 15 of these, no. but um, <laughs> yeah, it's a good, uh, good for dessert. Or yeah. You can put it on ice cream. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I love that. We actually try uh, myself and my friend a few years ago at the Ottawa Winter Brew Fest. He tried the the beer on top of the ice cream, and it was like, oh my god, like where did this come up from? So, yeah, this is all new to us. Yeah. Um, I'm a big fan of these beers. Dave is, like I said, more more of a a lager or light beer kind of. Yeah. Guy, so I have to push him, but he uh, <laughs> he can make good uh, pastry stout. So uh, we're happy about that. Awesome. Uh, so speaking of the beers, what, do you remember the first beer you ever brewed? Yes, at home. Uh, <laughs> so it was a basically brew in a box kind of thing. So okay. that was my first ever one. Uh, and I had actually put the lid on completely. So not thinking that the carbonation <laughs> happens. Um, so I, and it made a, a big, uh, big bubble on top. So I kept on like lifting it up to, to me. 
but it turned out to be an awesome lager, yeah. um, which was weird. I'm like, oh, this is great. <laughs> and then I went all grain and, and didn't look back from there. I, I, I wish I could brew here, but I do have a, a regular day job uh, ah, aside from the yes. brewery. So um, that pays the bills. And this is uh, the, uh, the fun part. So oh, it's important too. I mean, obviously, like you said, you know, take the money you have and double it. And then maybe you could start a brewery. So yes, exactly. Yeah, that's great. Uh, any uh, local breweries you've done collabs with uh, recently in the past? We haven't yet, so okay. we'd like to, but again, right now is, is probably not the right time. We opened in 2019 and then yeah. boom, it hits. Um, COVID hit and then um, we, uh, I love, there's so many good beers out there, especially, I mean, even in Quebec, like Brasserie du Bas Canada is, is yeah. just makes some amazing uh, pastry stouts and IPAs, right? So I'd love to do that. I don't, I'm not sure what, uh, what brewery Dave would like to collab with, like maybe a lager. I don't know who does great lagers in Ontario, but uh, maybe Steam Whistle. Um. Oh, that's that's your big name too. I mean, they're on our list of like one of the kind of bigger craft brewers, obviously in Ontario is, we'd love to interview Steam Whistle. And yeah. uh, they've just, you know, when they started releasing the pale lager and, and the other two beers, it's like, Wait a second, you guys just do Pilsners. This is all new. Well, so, apparently oh. Bose was picking on them saying, hey, yeah. you guys only have one beer. When are you going to start doing uh, stuff? So I don't know who told me that. So I don't know if it's Steve <laughs> Beauchene and, and okay. one of the uh, craft breweries uh, meetings there. But uh, that's, what, that's what I heard at some point. Uh, it's funny. But I think they're doing different beers now. Or, yeah. I think so. But. Yeah, very cool. Any kind of dream collabs? If it could be anybody in, let's say, <sighs> realistically North America when the border reopens? Oh, there's so many great beers. I mean, Hill Farmstead is, is, yeah. <laughs> is probably on everybody's list, right? But, yeah. um, oh, man, I don't know. Like, locally, I'd love to do uh, something with tooth and nail. I think they, okay. uh, they make some really, like, there's nothing, like, over the top, but all their beers are, like, super, super well-made. Cool. Um, so that'd be a cool collab right yeah. there. Definitely. No. Uh, and I look forward to when you guys start collabing. I mean, <laughs> the three beers I've had so far have been fantastic. So I look forward to your, like your creation and, and your co-brewers creation with other brewers getting out there. And, you know, if you're ever in Quebec, I'm always going to suggest our first three interviews hit La Brasse, Kahnawake and Luke's like, okay. you know, the, the local hometown guys. So yeah. definitely check those guys out. I've, I've had some Mesa M. Uh, which yeah. is Masorum's I mean, oh, I'm uh, very very good beers. Yeah, um, I'm I'm a walk from them, so it's like oh let's have. But they sell out like that, right? That doesn't help. Uh, but when the tap room was open, it was oh let's have three or four eight percent beers. Now my forty minute walk home is going to take an hour and ten minutes. So. <laughs> but at <laughs> or, least you, you get exercise out yeah, of it, right? Or it's an Uber. <laughs> so. <laughs> But yeah, uh, Masorum and, and right across from Masorum uh, in Montreal, we have uh, the St. Ambroise Terrasse. Or okay, patio. yeah. And it's, it's literally like your entire front lawn is their, their terrasse. So it's, it's amazing. Cool. I love it. Uh, so when it's safe to travel again, vacations you want to go on? Oh, uh, me and the girlfriend always go to Vermont. I mean, that's the, the, the place to go because we're three hours away yeah. in Ottawa. Uh, you guys are way closer to Montreal. Two, two hours. So there you go. So that's perfect, right? Um, I always try to sneak more beer back than, uh, <laughs> than I'm allowed, um, so that might be an issue, but um, that's always a place I like to visit. Uh, my dream place would have to be Southern California, maybe San Diego with all their uh, West Coast style yeah. beers. That, that'd be a, a cool place to, to visit, but, uh, but you can't bring the kids, so. Yeah, that's <laughs> it, you know. Hey kids, here's Disneyland. Yeah. Uh, Daddy's going to drink. 200 bucks. <laughs> so. Yeah. Nah. Don't get kidnapped. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. Now you just bring the mother-in-law. So she can oh, there you it, go. So perfect. perfect. Yeah. No. Uh, as, as a show, as ourselves, we'd love to hit Germany at some point, but that's you know. Yeah, that's I'm sure Dave ultimate. would say Germany yeah. because he's a big logger guy. Yeah. Uh, Belgium would be another like Disneyland for. That's, for that's the ultimate beercation to us. Exactly. Is, you know. To bur well, I mean, technically, birth land of beer. If you really want to go back, then it's like Egypt or Mesopotamia, but you know. Well, I think, those uh, don't exist, yeah, so. it probably doesn't taste anything like what beer tastes like these mm. days, right? But uh, still, give them props, right? Uh, that's what I found interesting. I actually caught uh, an article. It's a brewery based in a Plattsburgh called Oval, and they used our local university and they tested. They said, try and brew a beer without modern ingredients. And so they made a grew it. Okay. Uh, which is technically, and, and it, yeah. the guy said he had sold out like this. Like, I didn't even have a chance to put it in the crowlers by the time it was sold out so wow yeah hearing that kind of stuff is like really cool 
we try to do local, uh, we use stuff from our golf course. So mm -hmm. we use um, uh, Staghorn Sumac. So we have a Sumac Saison. We're big on Saisons as well. So we, we're all over the map. We yeah. don't just do IPAs. We, we do everything yeah. because, I mean, there's the golf course, but then there's the crap beer fan. So, yes. um, but, and then we use spruce dips. So, you know, like I know they're not, um, what was the beer you just said? Uh, the, a Gruet. Uh, a Gruet. Yeah. yeah, sorry. It's not a full Gruet, but yeah. we try to use like local stuff to replace yeah. some of the hops, right? So. Uh, I know for like brewers, it's it's notoriously difficult to clean the lines after a Gruet. So that's why a lot of people won't make them is that the cleaning process is even worse. Oh, so. I see. I know nothing about it. I'm, yeah. I tried one once and I wasn't the biggest fan, but maybe I need to try it again. Yeah. Um. <laughs> no, it, everybody has a different palate. Absolutely. You know, um, to me, beer is the spice of life. It's a variety. So that's why we it's, brew different types, yeah. right? People that tell me, oh, I don't like beer. I'm like, well, you haven't tried every single beer out there, right? Yeah. So, oh, you like wine? Try sours, you yeah. know, like. Go past your macro. Absolutely. You know, support. I, I totally agree. It is support local. You know, I heard uh, in Ontario, Molson kicked out their workers. Like, not cool. Yeah. So. No. Uh, you know, I'm always going to, I'm going to do my best to always support you guys. Yeah, I'll buy a Guinness here and there. Not, yeah, no. But well, I mean, good beer is good beer. Yeah. I mean, so. a Guinness, you can't go wrong. I know no. they're they're macro, but they're still yeah. very good. So it's fantastic. All right, what's the last beer I'm going to be trying? So that's our Gator Ale. So this is the beer that we brewed um, for a special, um, yeah. So it's a New England style IPA. <laughs> um, very floral, very uh, oh, tropical. That nose is so beautiful. Yeah. So, so you know how I know I don't have COVID is I can smell these beautiful <laughs> beers. So. And can you taste it? That's the question. Yeah. Oh, that is fantastic. What is this? Uh, six, six point six. Six five. Yeah. Okay. So. Mm. And it's still very green, so oh. it'll even get better. As, right, as... right on the sides of my tongue too. It's so yummy. Mm. Wow, that is a beer and a half. That's that's really tasty. It's probably the uh, not murkiest, but the, no, the no, you, more yeah, uh, orange I mean, juicy beer we've ever brewed. Yeah. Um, so, but it's it's well, I like you said, this. it's it's a newer beer. It's it's for the charity. So, uh, solid solid New England IPA. Uh, I forgot to ask earlier, where did the flight idea come up with the piece of wood, burnt in name? <sighs> Um, <laughs> I'm not even sure. I think it's one of my partners. He's just like, well, the one who built the brewery. Yeah. He's like, uh, let's just uh, have something made that we can burn stuff in. <laughs> we can put it on everything. I'm like, okay, sure, let's do it. But yeah, and the flights, uh, we had a whole bunch of them, but uh, I think they're they're starting to bend a little bit. So uh, we might have to, to make a whole new yeah. batch of them. But you know what? Um, I think everybody should offer flights just so yes. that uh, you can uh, see what you like and what you don't like. Yeah, exactly. Try a little bit of everything when you're here. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, literally, it's a little bit of everything. It's four or five ounces of each beer. You're going to get the taste and flavor, you know, a glass of water or a cracker in between, clean your palate if, yep. if you really want to, like, be that super taster type of person. So, but I mean, it's uh, a beer, right? So yeah. that's four ounces each. Yeah. So 16 ounces, yeah. that's a U.S. pint, yeah. you know, exactly. Perfect. I love it. Uh, so what's next for Broken Stick as, as a brand? Uh, hopefully COVID will finish soon and uh, <laughs> we'll just try to, I don't think we want to get too big too soon either. Uh, we want to make interesting beers for people to, to sample. It's, I know like IPAs and big stouts are what's in right now, yep. um, but we like to do everything here. So because we have, um, we have the golf course and yep. we have uh, some people that we want to convert to craft beer drinkers. Um, yep. a, lo a lot of people here were, <laughs> we're Coors Light drinkers, right? So yeah. um, we're converting them slowly but surely. Um, and we like saisons, we like all kinds of stuff. So we want to do uh, collaborations. We've, we've done some collaborations with uh, some wineries around here too. Okay, cool. spent, uh, we use their spent grapes yep. um, in our beer. Yep. Uh, and we want to continue to push the boundaries and, and just make good beer and get our name out there. That's that's basically what we're trying to do, like yeah. everybody else. Awesome. Uh, I have another question for you. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you for the delicious beers that we got to try. Uh, let the viewers know where they can find you guys. So we're in Hammond, Ontario. Um, so it's about 25, 30 minutes from Ottawa. Uh, you can find us on brokenstickbrewing.com. Uh, we're on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. So like everybody else. Perfect. All that's going to be in the show notes. As for us, you can find us at All Beer Inside everywhere. You can find myself at Killer Carpe Diem if you'd like to. And as we say at the end of all shows, drink craft, not crap.